Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Imana Amawe. Coming up on the program today, former publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Ulisa Metu, appears in court today with the aid of a stretcher. And Belchi residents get free Medicare from the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. And at least 14,000 pupils in Benue State run the risk of remaining out of school. Welcome to the program that brings you news from the length and breadth of Nigeria. Former Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Olisa Metu, has appeared in court on a stretcher following the threat by Justice Okonabang to revoke his bail if he failed to appear in court. Attempts by counsel to Mr. Metu to get a time frame from his doctors for his release from the hospital proved abortive. He, however, made a case for a one-month adjournment during which he hopes Mr. Metu will be fit to continue his trial. The trial judge said he had seen that Metu in his state cannot continue with the trial and therefore adjourned the case for one month. Mr. Metu is standing trial for alleged money laundering of 400 million naira being part of the funds linked with former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki. As far as we are concerned, an order of court must be obeyed. So what we did essentially was to compel uh, an obedience of that order, and that entailed uh, Mr. Metu, Chief Metu himself, insisting on his uh, discharge. And when the hospital authorities refused, he had to enter into an undertaking that he was being discharged at his own peril. We did all that in order to convince his lordship that um, nobody was playing any pranks, that he was genuinely ill. And um, as you also recall, we had pleaded for um, the release of his passport to enable him to undertake the surgery, the much required surgery. That problem is persistent, it hasn't gone away. See, as at the date we opposed the application, based on the medical report that they submitted to the court, the way and manner that report was submitted to the court did not lend credence to me as a prosecutor that it was real. The due process was not followed. That explained why we objected to the medical report and the court agreed with us. Now, today, a different scenario has played out in that, uh, as we all saw, the man really looks down. And as human beings and as mere mortals, I mean, seeing with my eyes what I saw, I couldn't have played God because all of us are liable to falling ill as human beings. So that explains why we could not oppose the application. Let him go and treat himself. Away from the courts, Boko Haram insurgents have killed at least one person and injured several others in an attack in Kala village, opposite Dalari IDP camp in Medugri, Borno State. The State Emergency Management Agency. Head, head of Ra Rapid Response, Belo Dambata, who confirmed the at attack, says the terrorists invaded the community late last night, burning down buildings. They also reportedly captured one of the residents whom they set ablaze. According to Mr. Dambata, the injured have been evacuated to the Medugri Specialist Hospital for treatment. The theater commander of Operation Lafia Dole had on Saturday said that Boko Haram had been completely defeated, with hundreds of the insurgents surrendering and several of them on the run. Away from security, at least 14,000 primary and junior secondary school pupils in Benue State are at risk of remaining out of school. This follows attacks by suspected headsmen, who have forced over 90, which has forced over 90,000 IDPs to seek shelter in five public schools in the state since January 2018. New classroom structures built by the Governor Samuel Otom led administration after over 5,000 public schools were destroyed by suspected herdsmen in 2014. But clearly, instead of students, it is now home to over 90,000 internally displaced persons owing to renewed attacks. 
The effect of this is that over 14,000 primary and junior secondary school pupils have been forced to stay at home. All the classes are taken over by the... The principal of the school, Mr. Mfe Simon, narrates that some of the students show up in their school uniforms with the hope that classes may resume someday. I had to disperse some of my students. This morning, I had about 20 of them that came and there's no way for them. So you can now see that all the classes are taken over by the IDPs. Academic work is grounded down here completely, and this affected us in 2014. We had the same problem where IDPs were camped here, and we had nothing doing here. When we came back, before we could make move to raise up the square gate, it was a problem. This crowd of IDPs forced from their homes have always interrupted the school calendar since 2014. We lost one in 2014. We never had an academic program here. Even our general certificate examination, which we have been taking in 2014, we couldn't take it. If you go to the examination board, the, record, the records are there that in Gumaluko government as a whole, nobody had that standard exam. To ascertain the actual figure of the students who were out of school since January 2018, Channel Television visits the chairman of Suburb. When I went to the camp in Bajemba, I met uh, the executive secretary of SEMA, who told me that the total number of school children in that camp was 2,050. So now, if you take this statistic, uh, you know, 2,050, and look across the seven IDP camps, you are talking about 14,000 children or more that have been forced out of school as a result of this Ahesme attack upon the communities. Although the 2017 and 2018 academic session is currently running, if nothing is done to check this trend of forced vacation of students on a yearly basis, owing to the protracted herdsmen and farmers' attacks, the future of these young children may be in jeopardy. Now, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency is offering free medical services to over 50,000 residents of Carefree local government area in Bauchi State. The executive director, Dr. Faisal Shuaib, explains that the program is part of plans to highlight the critical role of primary health care at the grassroots. <laughs> This drum beat signals the arrival of the executive director and some staff of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency to Karafi local government area of Bochi State on a medical mission to the community. The agency is trying to enlighten and encourage increased patronage of the primary health care centers through this community outreach and the choice of curfew for the mission is meant to honor one of its staff, Hajia Aisha Huwakwa, in her community based on recognition of her excellent services to the agency. We're targeting uh, close to 50,000 uh, men, women and children with free medical services. Uh, they are going to be assessed, you'll be given health information on how they can improve uh, their health. They are not paying a dime for the services rendered. So uh, that's uh, quite a lot. So it will take care of a lot of uh, uh, alignment uh, my, my staff are going through. Dr. Faisal speaks on the CHIPS program the agency will be introducing soon. So we're harmonizing all the community health interventions and we're scaling up to every single ward in Nigeria. So we're identifying women that are of good standing in their communities, identified by traditional leaders, religious leaders, opinion leaders, to say who are the people that we can train, give the necessary skills to be able to knock on every household in their communities and ask from women, ask from uh, the husbands, is there anybody in this house who is sick, who has a fever? Well, if you have a fever, we'll do, they'll run a test and give medicines. Shortly after the official flag off of the program, the medical team moves to the General Hospital in Kurafi to commence the delivery of medical services. Lined up here are these men and women waiting to take their turns. So I'm very happy to see this organization to our local government. Why? Because this is the first time that I see this organization here. We don't know how to explain our appreciation 
So we thank God for the, uh, visiting our local government. Residents are optimistic that the president's agenda to bring health care closer to the people through the revitalization of the primary health care centers nationwide will be realized soon.